My name is Ruth McCabe. I'm a conservation agronomist with Heartland Cooperative. And today I have my team here teaching some high school students at the Muscatine Ag Learning Center all about soil health. We're doing a couple of fun soil demonstrations showing the students how having more bacteria and fungus and insects in the soil can help break stuff down and make those nutrients available to plants. It's a fun day, the weather's gorgeous. We're having a good time. So who knows what tillage is? Breaking up the ground. Dude. Breaking up the ground, right? And basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna simulate rain falling on the soil, okay? We'll go ahead and get that soil nice and wet, fill that up. This one's the pasture here. Did it stay together for the most part? Yeah. Yeah, why do you guys think that? Why did it stay together? It didn't get ripped apart? Yeah, what are, what are some other features you see on this? It's got this? a root system in there. Yeah, you guys see this little fine stuff? Yeah. It's a bunch of roots right there. Yeah, I don't know if you guys can see this. Do you see this right there? A worm. Yeah, it's a worm. What do you think that does uh, for the soil? Aerates it. Yeah. Aerates it? Yeah, through the, through the holes it makes, right? It allows water to get in. Yeah. Underneath your feet, you've got a few different species here, right? Now, as humans, if you're going to eat food, you just want to eat apples all day, every day, every meal, 365 days a year? No. No. <laughs> and I like apples, and I don't want to eat that. As a bug or an insect or, or, or a fungus, do you think they like only corn all the time? Or do they like multitudes of species? All right, so, so we also buried washcloths and underwear here in this pasture underneath all these plants and I was going to have you guys dig them up but this was all that was left. Very broken down, right? Shredded, doesn't really look like much of anything. Probably in another few months you won't even be able to find these in the soil. What's the difference between the soils here and the soils over there? Yep. More biodiversity. There are more insects, more bacteria, more worms, everything here than there were over there. This was a pair of underwear we buried by that cornfield that was no-till corn. No-till means it doesn't get tilled, but it still gets corn planted in it, all right? That's kind of eaten up, okay? You could probably still tell it's a pair of underwear, but it's, it's eaten up. This was underwear that was buried in that garden behind you that's full tillage. That means that that garden gets whipped up a whole bunch with a tiller a couple times a year, maybe three times a year, all right? This is definitely less decomposed. If you were bacteria and you lived in the soil and you had basically a blender come into your home and rip it up a couple times every year, would you, would you stay there? No, you'd leave. <laughs> you'd leave. And that's what we see. We still have some decomposition, but not nearly as much. Now here's a pair of underwear buried in the pasture. And that is definitely decomposed, right? We got a lot of bugs, insects, fungus that live in the pasture. It never gets disturbed by a tillage implement, right? And it's got a bunch of diversity above ground. As a farmer, you don't have the option of growing your corn in a pasture. That's not gonna work. Corn doesn't grow that way. But you can make choices how you manage your soil where you can still support some bacteria in your soil and still grow corn, all right? And there's a, it's a fine, delicate balance. No-till is one practice farmers can use to encourage bacteria to grow in their soil. A lot of farmers are 100% no-till, some farmers are 50% no-till, so they switch between their corn and their beans. It's okay, some farmers use what's known as vertical till, which is minimum disturbance tillage. There's all kinds of ways you can manage your soil to encourage bacteria and stuff to live in your soil. 